Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how I incorporate my modular system into my workflow with Opus Modus. Um, before we do that, let's uh, I have a 16 bar piece, let's just quickly give it a listen. I will record it in Logic as well so we can see it and then just evaluate. That's the whole piece here. Um, let's take a look at the beginning. So first we have an harmonic progression function, which is, if you think about scale degrees, a very useful function. And this is usually how I think about chords, uh, which is why I'm using this one quite a lot. So what it allows you to do is uh, pass in a scale. In this case, I have a custom scale, which is a C harmonic. Um, it's not really a custom scale. I could do something like this as well, and it will sound exactly the same. Um, I just decided to go with a little bit more flexibility. So I'm passing in this skill that I specify here. And then we specify skill degrees. Now, because I set the base to one, these skill degrees will be as I think about them. One would be the C, um, five would be your uh, dominant, etc. So if we listen to this, Get a one chord or five, one, five, four, six, five, blah, blah, blah. Now, um, one parameter that I have here as well, one argument is the root, which is now set to zero. Um, so that means we can omit it in this case. But I wanted to show you this because you can do quite some interesting things with this. For example, I can every uh, second chord, I can uh, chromatically modulate up. Or I could take the first four chords and then modulate to the fifth. So that's something to have fun with. Now, as you can hear, all of these chords are in root position. And um, because of this, uh, I want them, uh, I want so in some cases, I want them to be a little bit smoother. So I pass them through this closest path function. So here we have an OMN to time signature, which will force everything to a 4 4. Within that, we have our make OMN function. Um, and then within that, for the pitch argument, we have our closest path. Now, uh, if we listen to that, you can hear that the voice leading is much smoother. Because basically, as the name implies, it will uh, take the closest path to the next chord. So it will make the chord smoother. Now, uh, two arguments we haven't really talked about, even though they are included in almost every function, is a section and exclude. So with exclude, we can say which events we don't want this function to apply to. Now, since I have whole notes here for my length, this basically means that the last four bars of my piece, they will not go through the closest path function. And we can see this as well at the end of the, of the part here, we, our chords are going higher. So that's for exclude, and the section one is the other way around. It allows you to specify to which events you do want to apply uh, this function. So that's a very good one to know about. Uh, this we go through uh, an assemble seek just to combine everything together, and then we have the line for our modular synth. Now this goes to the FH2 module. That's this black module right too. It's called Expert Steepers FH2. Uh, if you want to see all the MIDI devices connected, you can run the MIDI destination function, and you can see them all here. So this is the one for my modular system. Now if you switch on and off devices, they can go in a different order. So I don't like to use the port, rather I like to use the name of the the actual name of the device itself, which is what I'm specifying right here. So we can see that we sent this um, V1, we sent this the, the pitches basically, and then we sent it uh, CC, like this uh, CC1, these are variables, uh, um, but in this case they're actually true. So CC1 is uh, sending to, is actually sending CC1, and 2 is actually sending CC2 as well. So those are these shapes right here, mod 1 and mod 2, and they go into these two controllers. So 
uh, to take a look at that, first on this module, um, this one with, with the beautiful screen, we have this white cable which comes from the computer. This is all the MIDI going in right now, so the melodies and the modulation. Then out of the first port right here, we get the pitch. And I'm passing the pitch through the maths, uh, maths <laughs> uh, module, um, which allows me to slew down the pitch before it goes into the voltage per octave. So this is my oscillator right here. And if we, let's actually just listen to that right now. So just the modular system. So as you can hear, this a lot, these two knobs here allow me to, to make the pitch glide up and down for the various notes. So that's why I'm passing the output. This is just, just the notes, just the, the, the actual frequencies. I'm passing that through there before it goes into the pitch input of my oscillator. Now, um, the second port here, this is a gate message. So I send that to my envelope and this controls the amplifier just to have basic uh, envelope for the, for the for the amplitude of the sound. Then out of port four, um, we get our mod wheel, um, which in this case goes also into the mats just to be able to scale the amplitude um, or the voltage. And then it goes into the pulse width modulation, which controls the duty cycle of the pulse wave. Um, and then out of port 5, we get uh, CC2. This one goes straight into the CV2 on the filter. So this controls the filter frequency. And that's what we hear go up as the sound progresses. Um, so the way this works inside Opus Modus, it's um, very similar to what we've done before. Actually, it's just identical to, to what we did before. We just need to send it MIDI and the modular will do all the rest. Uh, but there's a lot of options to for exploring here. So for example, with, with any of the vectors that we use, um, we can use Shift Option Command 1 to visualize them. And you can see for the first one right here, the one that's controlling the pulse width, I have um, a sine wave being modulated by another sine wave. And with this alone, we can already get uh, many different kind of shapes by just tweaking some of the parameters right here. And if we look up the documentation, it, uh, it will mention that um, the first argument for the mod sine waves, as well as the mod sawtooth, is the um, nth iteration, which uh, allows you to have the frequency at each iteration of the wave. Uh, long story short, you can, you can create very cool things with that. Um, to take a step back though, if we look at a regular sine wave, let's say we have a sine wave that has a, a resolution of 120, um, a frequency of one and an amplitude of one. If we evaluate that, we get a very regular looking sine wave. Now we can start increasing the frequency. And as you can see, it does the job. Now we get two sine waves and we can go to four sine waves, etc. But this resolution is shared. So if we start to lower the resolution, let's say I set it to 12, we actually get triangle kind of waves because it doesn't have enough points to make a round shape. If we set this to one, it will look a little bit rounder again. But then if we decrease this to, let's say, four points, um, we just get that. If you do one point, you get only one line. I guess that we technically would have to do two points. It just tries to plot them. And now we get a point there and a point there. So with this, you can uh, make triangle waves as well, which is why you don't find a triangle wave in the system, because the gen sign can do it. Um, now, another interesting thing what we can do with these sine waves, we have here another one, which has a very high resolution, 2048 points. Uh, it repeats 16 times, so we can set it to 32 as well. Um, but then here we have a list of amplitudes. So if we go to the GenSign function, we can see um, that the amplitude can be a number representing the amplitude of the wave or a sequence serving as alternating amplitudes. And if we take a look at these alternating amplitudes, we can see that it creates distortion uh, here inside the wave because it's going to switch between an amplitude of 1 and an amplitude of 2. We can make this a little bit more visible by lowering this value, let's say 4. You can see that you get very beautiful distorting waves. So because um, I uncommented this right now, this will be the latest value. So right now we can listen to what this sounds like when this is controlling the pulse width of our oscillator. So you can 
actually hear that distortion there. We can make it more extreme by setting this frequency higher. Now we can also listen to a regular sine wave. Let's set um, a bit of a slower one. Um, maybe we can hear that a little bit more clearly if we set this blue cable into the CV2 so that it will be controlling the filter frequency. Uh, now we can try some other waves here as well, such as the um, modded sawtooth waves, the same principle. It will, in this case, modulate the sawtooth wave with another uh, sine wave. Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, that's very fast, like, let's say a little bit slower. Or even slower. I'm not hearing much difference for this because it's uh, right now it's going uh, way too fast. Because another factor we have with, with all of these is the Jang controller. So um, with this first one, we have the scale ramp and it's set to 16 right here. But it then uh, is being passed into this Jang controller, which has the timing set to 1 uh, over two, uh, 256. So what that means is that this 16 bars is actually going to be in 8 bars, because the default timing would be 128. Now, to work with these envelopes it, uh, and ramps, it can uh, be a little bit tricky in the beginning, or not necessarily tricky, but you just have to know a little bit how it works. So what I quite often do is I will have a test channel, which we can see here in, in Logic as well. And this allows me to record the modulation and then just look at it visually. So in this case, I can actually see, if I set this to the start of the region, I can see that after eight bars, this whole shape repeats. So we did say 16 here, but because this timing here is set to 256, um, it will be twice the speed. If I set this to 128, it will behave as expected. So let's actually um, take a look at that. So we just record in Logic. And then we solo that channel. We don't, we don't need to hear anything because we're just taking a look at the, at the modulation. So both of them right now are set to 128. And you can see that both of them right now are much slower. Um, another thing you see while this is recording is um, the min and the max values here. So for the second one, for the breath controller, CC2, I set a max of 80 points. Um, this will mean that no matter what shape you put in, it will never go higher than a MIDI value of 80. Um, and the other one is clipped at the bottom for 20, so it should be at least 20. All right, so now that the recording is done, we can take a look at the shape, and now we can see that this one, if we fix the starting point, yeah, that's fine. We can see that it does in fact last for 16 bars, the same as the other shape. And we can also see the top there is 80, the minimum is 10, whereas the other one, the minimum is 20 as specified right here. Um, so that, that can be a handy thing when you want to work with shapes and you want to visualize them a little bit more. Um, and then one more thing to show here is the gen ramp. Um, I showed this before, but just as a refresher, we have for our gen ramp, the starting value. Let's first take a look at this starting value, which is set to zero in this case. Then um, we have um, a nested list of the different stages of your ramp. So the first one says, all right, it ends at 38. So that will be right there. Uh, it has 20 points. The second value here is the number of points. If we decrease that, you can see that this segment gets a lot shorter. They only have two points right now. Uh, let's set it to 24 or something like this. And um, then the last one, where are we? Uh, here is the curve. So we have uh, we can do two, for example, and you can see that it becomes more exponential. And we can we can set a um, yeah, how do we call this? A, a method, an action on this on this uh, section. So we can say invert. This is um, this will flip the the curve the other way around. We can also say mirror, for example, which will mirror the shape on the other side. 
if I do this for this one as well, I might make it clear what this is doing. You can see that it mirrors the first section and then um, flips it the other way around. So with these, with your vectors, with your saw, uh, saw waves, with your sine wave, with your modded sine waves, you can pretty much control any modulation shape you want and then send it uh, to your modular to experiment. You can get very fast audio rate kind of modulations. Um, you can do a lot of creative things in terms of triggering. Um, as soon as I have a, a rack that's a little bit more filled out, right now I only have this oscillator and the filter, um, I, will, I will show some more examples of what you can do with this because I already have a lot of ideas on how we can incorporate Opus Modus in a modular system uh, for the perfect amount of control between experimentation like because you can set up all these complex waves and then still of course turn knobs on your modular system uh, and basically combine the best of both worlds. Right, that's uh, everything for now. Thank you very much for watching and I Hope to see you in a new video.